Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I just want to make a quick video to talk to you about the silver cord, the golden bowl, the pitcher, and the wheel that Solomon talked about in the book of Ecclesiastes. This is going to help tie into my video series about what happens to a person when they die. In this video, I want to just focus specifically about this silver cord connection and what I believe it means. With that being said, let's just start with Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, and it says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Now, I think you can see already looking at this scripture, and many and most scholars agree that this chapter is an allegory that Solomon is making, talking about a person growing old and what happens to the physical body as they grow old. But now I want to jump down to verse 6 to focus on what I want to talk about. It says, Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern. Now notice first off right here that it says the golden bowl broken, pitcher broken, wheel broken, but notice it said that the silver cord be loose. Verse 7, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And so you can see in verses 1 through 5, Solomon is talking about old age and growing older, about the eyes growing dimmer, the teeth wearing out and falling out, the legs becoming weak, and so on. But in verse 6, he makes a transition and says, this is what's going to happen at the moment and the time of death. If something happens to the golden bowl, the pitcher at the fountain or the wheel at the cistern, if something happens to those and a loosening of this silver cord, then the person is going to die. And at that moment, when something messed with the golden bowl, the pitcher, the wheel, that silver cord, then the person is and will die. When it talks about the golden bowl, the word for bowl there is H1543, gula, which means a bowl, a basin, a spring. In other words, this word is dealing with a small basin. It's easily and readily accessible. You can get in and out really quick. It's small, normally sitting on a table, and is often even compared to being on the candlesticks inside of the tabernacle. It's a smaller bowl, and therefore I believe that Solomon was referring to the golden bowl as the mind. And so if he says the golden bowl, the mind, the soul, the brain is damaged or hurt and separated from the person, that's what it's talking about in the golden bowl being broken. The word for pitcher is the Hebrew word 3537 cad, which means a large jar, pitcher, barrel, large pottery jar for water, and it is also used as a symbol for life, and breaking it indicates death. Now, I believe this analogy or allegory of the pitcher representing the human body itself, just like this cell phone has a body. So the pitcher is the larger jar and contains and holds the water. That's what it was designed for. So picture the golden bowl as being a small basin sitting on a kitchen table, for example, and then the pitcher being the larger jar, clay vessel, that they would use to go get the water, bring it back, and it was a large jar, usually a two-handled jar, that would house the water that was in it. And I'm comparing it, and I believe he was saying that is the human body. If something happens to the human body and it breaks then it cannot maintain the soul and it cannot maintain the spirit. And that silver core is broken, which we'll see in a minute. The word for wheel in the Hebrew is H1534, gal gal, which means a wheel, a whirl, or a whirlwind. And I believe Solomon is using this wheel as an analogy or allegory for the spirit. Because when you go to the book of Ezekiel, you will see that Ezekiel is talking about wheels a lot in relation to spirits or what the spirits are doing. 
And it simply means a whirling or a twirling. In other words, the energy, the motion, the power. And then when you look at the silver cord, the word for silver is kasef, which means silver as a metal or silver as a color. So it, it could be either one. It could be talking about a metal or it could be talking about a color. However, the word for cord is H2256, chavel, which means a cord, band, or rope. And then it said that the silver cord would be loosed. Those two words, be loosed, is actually one Hebrew word, H7368, rahak, which means to be removed, go far away. I believe what Solomon was saying, and he was taking the golden bowl and the pitcher and the wheel and using them to illustrate the body, soul, and spirit. And then went on to also say that the silver cord is what is tying those and holding all them together. And he said the silver cord could be loosed or broken, and it can't maintain that tie. I mean, let me say it this way. Have you ever thought about this? Like, what keeps your spirit inside of your body? I mean, really, literally. What stops your spirit from deciding, you know what? I'm just going to get out of this body for a little bit. I'm going to leave it as a lifeless lump of human DNA and flesh and dust. And I'm going to go to the other side of the world. And I'm going to go sightseeing. I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go fly around the universe. I'm going to go swimming in the ocean. I'm going to go talk to some whales. I'm going to go fly around with some birds and the spirit do anything that it wanted to do. Come back a couple of hours later, pick up the human body again and be back to normal. Oh, it came back to life again. Wow, that's pretty awesome. The point I'm trying to make is what keeps the human spirit, the spirit of you, bound inside of your human body where it can't get out even if it wanted to? And if it does get out, then you die and the body goes to dust. And when your spirit is released, your spirit goes back to God who gave it. The point I'm trying to make is I want you to understand that the silver cord connection is what is holding you, your spirit, the real you, trapped inside of your human body. In fact, I could say it this way. I like to compare this silver cord to your spiritual umbilical cord. Just like a baby inside of a womb has an umbilical cord connecting it to the mother, this silver cord is tying you to your spirit and keeping the body, soul, and spirit where they are all trapped together, housed inside of a human body. And Peter and the Apostle Paul both talked about that when we are at home in the human body, we are trapped in a tabernacle of human flesh. And they went on and they talked extensively about that while they were in the body, they were trapped to doing what the body had to do, but there would be a day when they would put this tabernacle down, this human body of flesh down, and the spirit would immediately be present with the Lord. Now, I don't know if you have ever thought about this, but I think about this quite a bit. And that is how come it seems like some people die and there doesn't even really appear to be a reason that they die. And then some people, they go through the worst, most horrible thing you've ever heard of and don't die. And one thing after prayerful consideration and study in the Word of God over and over, I believe that it has to do with the strength and the tie of the silver cord. What am I saying? I believe that perhaps, for example, a person may be struggling with some kind of debilitating disease and struggling with chronic disease over and over. And over time, that person may get worn out emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and they get to the point maybe where they don't really care anymore whether they live or die. Well, at that point when they don't care whether they live or die anymore, that silver cord connection holding their spirit and maintaining their spirit in their body and preventing that release has grown very, very weak. And it does not take much at all to cause that loosening or that breaking or that separation where the person actually dies. On the other hand, for example, and I have heard many stories, just as an example, of skydivers diving out of planes, 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet. I think I even heard one story about a person at 12,000 feet. And then the parachute didn't go out or got tangled up and the reserve parachute also didn't work. 
and fall and hit the ground 12,000 feet and not die. All of it recorded on video and not die. I've heard maybe hundreds of stories of people falling great dramatic distances, hitting the ground and did not die. Why? I personally believe the reason they did not die was because the silver cord connection holding them in their body was strong and powerful and the person did not want to die. I can't explain to you how a person can fall thousands of feet and hit the ground, the solid ground, and not die. And yet another person can be walking in the parking lot, trip over something, fall four foot, hit their head, and die. The only thing that I can come up with in ministry, I have seen many people pass away. And one thing I have seen is the more they give up, the easier it is for them to go ahead and pass away. Why? Because the silver cord connection is growing weaker and weaker as their will slowly gives up. A perfect example is Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. What am I saying and why am I highlighting this verse? Because when you look at it, in a sense, Jesus is giving himself permission to die. He did not die till he uttered those words and said, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. In other words, it's like Jesus had a choice. Jesus was in the charge of the moment that he was going to pass away. He was not going to die until he said that he was ready to die. And notice also that he said, unto thy hands, I commend my spirit, not my body, because the body is still on the cross. The body is still going to be pierced by a Roman spear. The body's going to be taken down, placed in a grave. That's what's going to happen to the body. But he said, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. In other words, what I'm saying is Jesus was in charge of the very moment that he was going to die. And when he made the willful choice, okay, I'm ready to die. Into thy hands I commend my spirit or give my spirit into your hands, authority, jurisdiction, take my spirit. That at that moment is when Jesus died. What am I saying? He allowed the silver cord that was holding and maintaining his spirit inside of his vessel body, tabernacle, temple. When he loosed that silver cord, the spirit left the body and it says that he immediately died and gave up the ghost or expired and breathed his last breath and died when he made the willful choice to die. What I'm trying to show you is I believe that Solomon was emphatically telling us about the body spirit soul connection and that he made this analogy about the golden bowl, the pitcher and the wheel. And then he said there is a silver cord that is holding it all together and trapping your human spirit inside of your body. And you cannot leave your body unless that silver cord is broken. And if it's broken, they're going to take the human body and put it over here in a grave and it will return to dust. But the spirit will return to God to do whatever God wants to do with your spirit, depending on how you live. The point I'm making is that the strength of that silver cord determines how easily or how difficult it will be for you to die. Just as an example, again, being a minister, I have been beside people on their deathbed, been around many people that have gone on, and I have seen that the more they give up and the more they lose hope and the more they want to just go on and be with Jesus, they start growing weaker and fainter and losing their desire, and everything is just shutting down and coming down. Why? Because they're losing the desire of the silver cord to keep their human spirit inside of their human body. And as it grows weaker and weaker and weaker, now the spirit cannot maintain that connection to stay inside of the body. And once the silver cord is loosed and the strength of it is lost and it's broken, now the human spirit now leaves the human body because the connection was lost. The strength of the bond, the cord, was lost, and therefore the human spirit now leaves the body. And I hope this is making sense, but I just got to get you to understand this, that the silver cord 
This spiritual cerebral cord is what actually holds your human spirit, human soul, and human body all together. And the strength of it determines whether you're going to live or die depending on what happens. And in your own life, you may even know of many examples yourself where someone died and looking at the circumstance and situation, it looks like there is absolutely no reason that this person should have died. I don't even know how they died. What happened? It doesn't even look like it's possible for a human being to die in this situation. And yet they did for some reason. And it may have affected the body, the mind, may have affected something. Maybe it was a broken spirit. People have actually died of broken hearts and broken spirits. And so whatever it was that caused it to happen, the silver cord connection was not able to maintain itself, and therefore they passed away. That's just one reason. And on the flip side, you probably know somebody that went through a terrible, horrific Sickness, chronic sickness, disease, terrible, tragic car accident, falling accident, work accident. It could be any number of things. And for all intents and purposes, look like there is absolutely no way that this person should have lived through that car wreck, that falling accident. There's no way they should have got crushed in that and lived. And yet they lived somehow. I've seen people that were burned, their body and for all intents and purposes, they probably could have and should have died, but they didn't die. Why? Because they didn't want to die. And that silver cord was strong inside of them and holding that spirit inside of that human body and not letting it go. Let's look at what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23. He said, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless... To abide in the flesh is more needful for you. I like how the contemporary English version says it. It says, it is a hard choice to make. I want to die and be with Christ because that would be much better. But I know that all of you still need me. And that's why I am sure I will stay on to help you grow and be happy in your faith. The reason I'm highlighting this and showing you this is because According to the Apostle Paul here, it's like he has a choice of whether he wants to live and die. He says, I have a desire to go ahead and die. I want to die. I'd rather just go ahead and be with Jesus and be done with this world and this race that I'm running here, all the trials and the tribulations and the shipwrecks and the beatings and the, the stoning and everything else I'm going through. You know what? I'm done. I'm ready to just die and go into heaven. However, I do also know that it would be good for me to stay here for you. I need to teach you. I need to help you. I need to pray for you. I need to fast with you. I need to disciple you and show you how to be a good Christian. I'm torn between the two, and I've got a choice to make. I want to die and be with Christ, but I also want to live and help you both. The reason I'm saying this is because this goes back to what I'm saying. The person's will also determines how strong the silver cord is. If you don't want to live, then guess what? If you want to die, that silver cord connection is becoming weaker and weaker the more you want to die and the more you want to go on. You are making the silver cord connection weaker and weaker and thinner and thinner. And it will be easier to break that tie. But the more you want to live and the more you want to do and the more you want to stay here, you are actually strengthening that silver cord connection and actually helping to hold your spirit inside of your human body. I'm trying to tell you that what you think in your mind and how you view your life and whether you want to go on to heaven or whether you want to stay here also help determines the strength of the silver cord connection holding you here. If you don't want to live and if you want to just go on, then you are automatically by default yourself making that silver cord connection weaker and weaker. If you want to live, then you're making it stronger and stronger, and you're going to be able to endure a whole lot of stuff because you've got a will to live, and you are making that connection strong. If you wanted to ask me, Brother Theo, what is that tie that keeps the human spirit inside of the human body? I would tell you, Solomon gave you the answer. I believe that it is the silver cord. It is what holds and maintains your spirit and soul trapped inside of your human body till such time it's appointed one man wants to die 
However that happens and whenever that happens, whether prematurely or at your good and full appointed time by God Almighty, whenever you die, that silver cord will be loosed and then your spirit will be untrapped and unheld by your human body anymore. This tabernacle, this jar of clay, this temple, this home of the flesh that we live in while here on earth, and then we'll step out of it someday because that silver cord is loosed and can no longer hold us inside of this human body. It'll be a glorious day because we'll step into the eternal glory and power of God Almighty. We'll study that more in other videos, but I pray this was a blessing to you and you enjoyed it in some way. But just let me say again, the golden bowl, the pitcher, and the wheel I believe to be the body, soul, and spirit. And the silver cord is what holds it all together and keeps you all trapped in a body, soul, and spirit right here on earth. And then when it can't maintain that connection, you will be loosed and your spirit will go back to God who gave it. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for sticking through this video with me. I pray it was a blessing to you. And I want to say thank you to everybody that prays for me. I want you to know that I'm praying for you also. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. I love you. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.